Welcome back to the Marvel Movie Minute, a daily podcast in which we smash apart the films of the Marvel Cinematic Universe into one-minute chunks so we can analyze them in scrupulous detail. I'm Kyle Olson from the Road to Infinity podcast. Hey, and I'm Rob Cabosco. And Kyle, this is a personal question. Mm-hmm. Have, you, have you ever thrown something in anger? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I think... <laughs> not I think on a regular basis, us, I will say, but oh, yeah. Exactly. Not, I'm, I have, I've become a much better person as I start to mature in age. <laughs> but, I mean, I think everybody understands. Either you've understood... You know, throwing something in anger, hopefully, and if you're doing it on a regular basis, certainly we would ex- encourage anyone to seek professional assistance in that. Yes. Um, talk but that to is, someone. Right. Talk to someone. Just absolutely. No, no doubt about it. You know, that whole concept is, if you go into the psychology of why people do this, it's because they're obviously having a difficulty controlling their emotions. Mm-hmm. And that emotions then become personalized onto an object. Um, oh, Yes. You know, and and obviously we know sometimes it's not an inanimate object, but in this case, you know, we're talking about inanimate objects. So you can't control the situation. So you look at the thing nearest to you that you can control, and you hurl it, right? Mm-hmm. Because you're you're trying to mobilize those emotions. You're trying to to project those emotions onto that device. And obviously, again, if if that's something that you're listening to this and that's something you know too well, yes, absolutely, talk to someone about it because that's an important thing to do. It that is something that our hero, the Hulk, seems to continually have an issue with. And, <laughs> and we, see it, we see it play out right here in this minute. Oh, yes. So uh, here we are at minute 61 of The Incredible Hulk from 2008, directed by Louis Leterrier. Uh, and we're picking up right where we left off, which is uh, hanging out in the cave. Uh, this is after uh, Hulk has just had a, well, I guess a conversation, except that he doesn't talk. Uh, so uh, he uh, had the uh, response where he was getting a little too in uh, Betty's personal space, uh, and then he's being a little bit of a creeper. Uh, she woke up. There he is, this big green face laying in, and she and she slaps him, and he goes. Uh, and so as he moves back, he bumps his head. So we're we're coming in now after having his bump bumped his head on the top of the cave, and I gotta say. I don't know if it was by the uh, strength of the animation or just context of humanity, but like he looks kind of embarrassed. Yes, yes. Like, as, he, as you say, they're sort of like, oh man, I can't believe I blew it. Like, uh, here's my big chance to impress the girl, and I bump my head. God, what is wrong with you, Hulk? Come on, Hulk, pull it together. Well, they hold. The, I think the animation is interesting in that he's got his he's got his hands on his hips, right? Mm-hmm. And he's just kind of standing there, like <sighs> that. This happened. is not not going well. Not going right. Well. I mean, did that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that is kind of, it's very human. I mean, it's a very human portrayal of yeah. just that sort of posture, like, oh boy, now what do I do? <laughs> yeah, it's and also trying to figure out what the Hulk's level of intelligence is, or like what how much he understands. Like, is, is he a caveman? Is he a child? Like, sort of, how much of this does he get? You know, how much of Bruce is still getting through that? Because that's the other thing, is that... At this point, the Hulk is still cool with being called Bruce. Oh, right. Later right. on, he will have a huge problem with that. But right now, there. So I don't know if it's if that's a difference in philosophy of movie making, or evolution of the character, or just like Hulk is like, well, you can, as long as you call whatever you want, as long as you don't run away. Right. Did you find okay in this scene as this plays out? Then in the cave, we got the rain, everything. Did you get yep. a? Um, I got a very Frankenstein vibe. Oh, yes. It's, this is very much old-time movie monster right. kind of feel, too. This is, yeah, Phantom of the Opera. I mean, like, this is this is all that, that kind of stuff. The uh, Beauty and the Beast. This is King Kong. This is, I mean, right. all those kind of things of, like, uh, somebody takes a beautiful girl and hides her away from the rest of the world. She wants right. to be the one to walk in the sun, Rob. <laughs> well, it's, there's no sun right now. <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> it's just, it's true. yeah. Uh, no, and also, and it looks really good as they, as, so, you know, he kind of standing there, she's approaching him, he's kind of turning around, he turns around and you see the close-up of the face. I think the 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 work done on the water and mm-hmm. the rain, yeah. really well done, and this sort of forlorn look he has, this is the closest that they've come, whether, I don't know if it's intentional or not, but the closest they've come with rendering Ed Norton's face mm. in The Hulk. Yeah, it's true. There, there is some behind the scenes footage where you see he did a lot of face capture stuff. Oh, okay, uh, and it's it's interesting to see uh, how the technology is involved because now we're used to seeing dots. So, like when an actor does uh, motion capture, their face is covered in dots. If you watch uh, Josh Brolin as Thanos, 
his face is covered in dots and usually, and even with any circus he will have a camera mounted to the side of his head to like watch the the face as he's as he's acting uh, at this point they had to paint Ed Norton's face entirely white so he's like wearing almost like white a full face paint mask as he's doing all the different expressions because that was I guess at the time maybe it was like a uh, um, it, the camera picked up only the white or something I'm not sure but it, you can see and they, and they show side by side in there and one uh. of the behind the scenes things I found on YouTube so Hulk and Betty are having a quiet moment as, as she's sort of like sorry I slapped you dude I like uh, you know big green face when you wake up that's not what you want to see uh, but then stupid thunder had to go and interrupt the party Man, Thor, thanks. Oh, uh, you're a little... We're going to talk uh-huh. about that in about another right? 12 well, seconds. It, <laughs> right? So it, it reminded me of that because, uh, oh, man, come on. Hulk is afraid of thunder. It's like, well, yeah. You know who else is afraid of thunder? Loki. Because yeah. if you go back to the event, uh, up to the Avengers movie, you know, jumping forward in time, uh, the, what's the matter? Afraid of a little lightning? And Loki says, I'm not overly fond of what follows. <laughs> ah, right? Because... I mean, really, eh, technically, by the, the the timeline of the MCU, the Thor stuff is happening at the same time. Right. So, right. as we talked about in the last minute, this comes directly from Hulk Gray, written by Jeff Loeb and drawn by Tim Sale. In the comic book, this comes right after a fight with Iron Man, uh, the first, the supposedly the first encounter of Hulk and Iron Man, and they he takes Betty away. Uh, and to the cave, and so, but this is the, uh, even in the commentary, he says this is a direct homage to that scene because that was his, that was the in doing his research. This was Louis's favorite Hulk comic that he found was Hulk Gray. Uh, so this this whole yelling at the thunder thing came from there. And on the one hand, yeah, I get it. This is it's very much the movie monster vibe. They actually uh, name check Frank Frazetta in some of the design, like the big the Hulk, like he throws the the boulder as we talked about, you know, like almost the size of a car. He just picks it up and throws it, and then has this big like flexing like you can't stop me thunder like and it, they said that was very much inspired by the frank Frazetta, the big musculature big guy you know he's got but same time he was in the rainforest do you really think he's still afraid of thunder that seemed a little bit like really but i guess you know sometimes it's uh you don't know you don't, the big booming sound you don't know where it's coming from well it also just may it might be just his reaction i think the way this is portrayed is that hulk's just got all this difficult to contain rage mm-hmm. and He's just hearing this, you know, I mean, basically it's one immovable force against another immovable force. True. Him hearing the thunder is like, oh, okay, universe, I'll show you. <laughs> Hulk I'm the like, strongest I, one there is. Right. I mean, like, that's what I, that's what I kind of got from this is that it's just him just trying to, to manage what is happening. I, I think it's just a great shot of as it pans around and he does the whole, like, I mean, again, you see the enormity of the feet, you see his arms move back and he just mm-hmm. lets loose. Uh, no, I, I think it's, I think it's Hulk versus the Hulk versus the universe. I mean, you it's didn't Hulk. get an uh, old man yells at cloud vibe. From that? <laughs> no, <laughs> no? Okay. I'll show just you thunderstorm. That's right. This is what you get. <laughs> you win this time. You, I'm, in, I bump my head. My uh-huh. girl doesn't know me. <laughs> I got Call me by the wrong name. On. There's no takeout. This is not <laughs> working out. <laughs> uh, but as as the lightning is flashing, you very clearly see the gray skin, though. I mean, that was definitely oh, yeah, a, another homage to the Hulk's original coloration. Right. Uh, like you, as it flashes back and forth, which is which is a nice nod to the fans and stuff too. I, I appreciated that. Um, and then uh, Betty steps out. And the Hulk is still, like, and basically he like motions back, like no, no, no. I mean that that was really cool because it's very much of a protective gesture, right? Of like, like no, like I don't, I don't know what this thing is, but it's still coming. Like I'm still hearing it. Like stay back. And he does it a couple times. Like he doesn't grab her or move her or knock her back or anything. He just like motions, like no, no, it's not safe. Stay back. And then she has to sort of be the one to calm him down and say like no, it's fine, Bruce, Bruce, it's fine. She's like she called me Bruce. And then so she she basically takes him by the hand and sort of leads him away, and that's pretty much where the minute comes to an end. It, the thing is, even if we did the like what we did with the conversation in the hallway back there, there's only like what three lines in this whole thing. Yeah, and, this is no, this is and very Bruce. Right, right. Yeah, I think I think the purpose of this minute really is to show the throwback, like you mentioned, to the Gray Hulk, uh, kind of, and just kind of give that epic sweeping shot of him, boom, unleashing rage on you know just the world, right? Uh, there is an interesting so so we mentioned Thor. Yeah. There has been a uh, sort of a online urban legend about this scene. Oh, really? That has been talked about. So there was a theory, and you just mentioned okay. So the events of Thor are starting mm-hmm. to unfold. You know, roughly 
the same time time frame. Yeah. As as he 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 basically comes out of the cave, he throws the rock, and then it kind of does the whole pan sweeping shot, and it's like kind of another one of those over the shoulder shots. If you look out in the distance, you see something fall from the sky. Oh. There was for a while people th- were sure it was the that hammer? must be the hammer. Oh, uh, Mjolnir is falling, but it's, it's, it's probably just it's the not. rock. It's yeah. the rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, oh, well, fans, and, and, I love the fans. They'll search right, for anything no, I, for an Easter. And you picked up on it. The reason why people thought it was the hammer was, oh, it's lightning and thunder, and that would wouldn't that be an amazing way to tie everything together? Mm-hmm. It's just a rock. Yeah. So Nowadays, like that. that I'm sure that w- that would be the case, but like they weren't quite as sophisticated then uh, at here in movie right. two of uh, their cinematic journey. Exactly. But I think that's also cool. Say hey, kudos to mm-hmm. the CGI guys. You actually decided to put the. I mean, he throws that's the rock. That's true. It's got to fall. Like that's yeah. kind of cool. It could like be just way gone, to... gone. But they actually had it come. Right. Oh, that's pretty good. And I gotta say, I, I gotta give a big, big shout out to Liv Tyler in this because she had to act. You know, and I, I assume this was a soundstage. I couldn't really find anything on there because everything there's so much CG. It's hard to know what was actually there or not. But actually, they were they were sitting on something. So I assume they built some sort of a cave thing. But she's acting opposite, probably a tennis ball. If she was right. lucky, maybe right. it was a, a stunt performer, uh, or or just some guy. You know, like they just they just found somebody so she could have a warm body uh, to to react to. And you know, she's her eye line is great. Yes. Absolutely, you know, and she she's showing wariness, not fear, which is a, another very difficult thing to pull off. Because the point of Betty in this is not that she's terrified of this monster who has kidnapped her, essentially, but that she's seeing the man she loves inside of this thing, and like, and she's never really gotten to have a a moment with it. Right. You know, she. I mean, obviously, the first time she was there when when the Hulk was quote unquote born. Uh, but since then, like she's uh, only seen like the news reports, maybe because even that we saw in the opening that there even there's not a lot of footage out there. So now she gets to see this thing that has kept her love from her. I mean, there's a lot that, that can be going on in this thing, and so she has to play a lot of it, you know, almost silently because like there's very little dialogue. No, she does a great, great job with this. Everything, everything from her emoting, her facial expression, her her whole posture, mm-hmm. everything. And I think what's neat about this is is closing out that minute is they're they're approaching each other yeah. is that the Hulk is puts his hand out. I mean it's yeah it's surprising because up until this moment we have seen the Hulk portrayed as you know rage unleashed. Yes. Obviously mostly uh, not offensive, defensive, but when when the mm. defense comes out it's it's True. obliterates. I mean, like, yeah, he, he showed those bullies what Right, more. exactly. And I think this is a neat turning point in the movie as we're now as we're getting into now the second half of the movie, mm-hmm. this readiness of the Hulk to accept compassion, to accept, mm. you know, a reaching out. And yes, of course, it's tied because even inside the banner inside the the Hulk knows the, who this is and 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 wants that. I think it's a great showing of the Hulk being able to respond to reciprocate that that gesture. So yeah. Yeah, you're right. We're seeing the control. Like we're seeing the Hulk. Yeah. Unleashed monster. The transition from unleashed monster to focused hero. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we're because we're seeing that he can do more than just throw tanks around and and, exactly. and punt soldiers. We'll find out what happens. Does he does he finally lose control or does he, you know, decide to start talking and saying like he's a? Does she start swinging sweet mystery of life? We don't know, but we'll find out in minute sixty two. And while you're waiting for Minute 62 to drop, you can follow us on all of the social media things. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. And who knows what other ones might have been invented by the time this episode drops. We don't know. Just look for The Next Reel, and you'll find us there. You'll see when our next episode is dropping or any of the other Next Reel podcasts. So in the meantime, hope you have a smashing good time. Thanks for listening. Until next time, true believers. Bye. Bye.